In this video, we'll learn about intervals and interval notation. There are three ways that we can describe an interval. One is using inequalities, the next is using a number line, and then finally we'll learn about interval notation. So if we're talking about an interval, typically we're talking about the numbers between two given numbers. So for example, one way I could describe an interval with inequalities would be to say 3 is less than x is less than 7. And so then I'm talking about all of the numbers that are between 3 and 7, but not including 3. That's because this is a less than sign, not a less than or equal to sign. And we also don't want 7, because this is a less than sign and not a less than or equal to sign. So that's how we would describe that interval of numbers with inequalities. If we wanted to describe it using a number line, the number line might look something like this. Somewhere on our number line is the number 3. Somewhere else on our number line is the number 7. And we're looking for the numbers that are between 3 and 7. So the way that we indicate that we don't want to include 3 is we draw an open circle at 3, and we also draw an open circle at 7. And then we want all the numbers in between 3 and 7, so we shade in the part of the number line that's between 3 and 7. So that's the way that we would describe that interval using a picture, using that number line. Finally, we can use what we call interval notation. So what we do is we write our two numbers, 3 and 7, put a comma in between them, and then to indicate that we don't want to include 3 and that we don't want to include 7, we put round parentheses around those two numbers. So the round parentheses there mean that we don't want 3 in our interval and we also don't want 7 in our interval. Now we have to be careful when we use this notation because we've seen this kind of notation before. We've seen parentheses 3 comma 7 before. And the, way, the place that we've seen that before is when we think about the point 3 comma 7 in space. So we could draw a picture where we have an x-axis and a y-axis, and we could have the point 3, 7, which might be somewhere around here. 3 units over and 7 units up. And that is exactly not what we mean when we say 3, 7 in the context of an interval. So in this case, we have to understand when we mean 3, 7 the point and when we mean 3, 7 the interval. So usually you'll know from the context of the problem when we're talking about an interval and when we're talking about a point. But it is something that you have to watch out for. It is something that's a little bit confusing. What if we decided that we wanted to actually include one of two of those uh, endpoints in our interval? So what if we wanted to think about the numbers, let's say, between 4 and 9, but we wanted to include 4, but still not include 9? So that's how we would write that inequality. Uh, that's how we would write that interval with inequality. So we would say 4 is less than or equal to x, is less than 9. So now we're talking about the numbers that are between 4 and 9, but we want to include 4. 4 is part of this interval, but 9 is not part of this interval because of that less than sign. So this is going to look pretty similar to what we did before. If we want to draw this on a number line, the number line looks something like this. Somewhere on our number line is the number 4. Somewhere else on our number line is the number 9. And now since we're not including 9 in our interval, again we draw an open circle there. But since we are including 4 in our interval, we draw a filled-in circle at 4. And then once again, we want all the numbers that are in between 4 and 9, so we shade that in. So that's what that number line picture would look like. What about the interval notation? Well, again, it's pretty similar to what we saw before. We draw a 4 and a 9 with a comma in between them. We don't want to include 9, so once again, we use a round parentheses. So to indicate that we do want to include 4 in this interval, we draw a square bracket around the number 4. So this square bracket means that we want to include 4 in our interval, and this round parentheses means that we do not want to include 9 in our interval. So if I wanted the numbers, let's say, between 2 and 10, but I did not want to include 2, and I did want to include 10, then that's how I would describe that with inequalities. This is the, number, this is the set of numbers between 2 and 10, not including 2, including 10. If I wanted to draw that with a number line, again, I draw my number line. Somewhere on that number line is the number 2. Somewhere else is the number 10. I don't want to include 2, so that gets an open circle. I do want to include 10, so that gets a filled in dot. And then I shade in everything in between. And then finally, my interval notation has a 2, comma 10. I do want to include 10, so I draw a square bracket. I don't want to include 2, so I draw a round parentheses. What do I do if I want to include both endpoints? Let's say we want the interval of numbers between 5 and 8, and I want to include both 5 and 8 in my interval.
So 5 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 8. This is the set of numbers between 5 and 8, including both 5 and 8. My number line would look something like this. Here's 5, here's 8. I want to include both of those numbers, so I put a filled in dot for 5, filled in dot for 8, and then I shade in everything in between. What about my interval notation? Well, again, I draw 5, 8, and then since I, want, since I want to include both of those numbers, I put square brackets around both of those numbers, 5 and 8. Another kind of interval that we haven't talked about yet is an interval that's described by a simple inequality. What if I simply want the numbers x that are greater than 6? Well, that's an interval as well. And to understand what the interval notation would look like for that, it's easier to understand what the number line would look like. So we draw our number line. We only have one number to think about, the number 6. We know we want to not include 6, so we draw an open circle at 6. And we want all the numbers x that are greater than 6, so we start shading above 6. But because we don't have another number, we never stop shading. We shade in all of the numbers from 6 all the way out to infinity. And thinking about infinity there is exactly the right idea. If we want the numbers from 6 to infinity, that's exactly how we draw it. We don't include 6, and infinity isn't really a number, so we can never really include infinity. The infinity there just says we keep going and going and going forever. We never stop putting numbers that are bigger than 6 into this set. And that's what the interval notation would look like. A slight variation of this would be numbers x greater than or equal to 12. Again, the number line shouldn't be too surprising. We draw a number line. Here on our number line somewhere is the number 12. We want to include 12 in our interval this time, so we draw our filled-in dot, and then we shade up and up and up and up and up and above 12 forever. And so the only thing that's different here with our interval notation is we go from 12 to infinity, but we include 12 and we don't include infinity. Again, we never include infinity. We're never going to draw a square bracket around that infinity because infinity is not a number. It can't really be in our set. The infinity there is just indicating that we keep going forever. All right, what if our inequality goes in the other direction? What if I want the numbers x that are less than 0? So here we're talking about the set of negative numbers. Well, if we draw this with our number line, here's my number line. Somewhere on my number line is the number 0. I don't want to include 0, so open circle. And now I want all the numbers that are less than 0. So instead of shading to the right like we did before, now I'm going to shade to the left. Down and down and down and down forever. So instead of going from 0 to positive infinity, 0 is at the upper end of my spectrum now, and at the other end is negative infinity. Again, negative infinity isn't really a number, but we write that to indicate that we just keep going down and down and down and down forever. Of course, since negative infinity is not a number, we never write square brackets there. And in this case, we don't want to include 0 in our interval, so we write round brackets around that as well. Again, slight variation if I wanted to change this to, let's say, the set of numbers x less than or equal to 3. Then again, I draw my number line. Here's the number 3. Here's my filled in dot because I want to include 3 in this interval. And since I want the numbers less than 3, I shade to the left. My interval notation includes 3 and goes down to negative infinity. There's one other interval that we haven't talked about yet, and that's the interval where we include all numbers that are in the number line. There's no real way to write that with an inequality, but certainly we can think about how to write that with a number line. If I want all numbers to be in this interval, then I'm going to shade everything. So what would my interval notation look like? Well, I want everything from minus infinity up to infinity. And again, I never include square brackets because those two things aren't really numbers. They just say we go on forever in both directions. So the closest thing we can come to calling this an inequality is we simply describe this set as all real numbers. And the best way really to describe it is using that interval notation, minus infinity to infinity. So to summarize, we've got nine different kinds of intervals. We've got four kinds of intervals that are numbers between two given numbers, and those depend on whether we have less thans versus less than or equal to signs. We've also got four different kinds of intervals where we only have one given number, either all the numbers that are bigger than or bigger than or equal to a given number, or all the numbers that are less than or less than or equal to a given number. And then finally we have the set of all real numbers.